Let us enter into this time of worship and celebration. In the safety of this sacred place, we are invited into a time of gratitude, reflection, renewal, and hope. Come in, bringing all of who you are. Calm your hurried pace. Know that you are not alone. There is strength and caring support for you here. Let us quietly reflect on these words. Well, I'll start today's message with some questions, and we'll come back to them again toward the end. Is there a difference between being religious and being spiritual? We've touched on that briefly already. Can a non-religious person ever be spiritual? Is it a sin for a terminally ill person in pain to ask God to take them now? If I haven't been baptized, can I still get into heaven? And while these may seem theoretical, the last two questions were actually asked of me by end-of-life patients in my spiritual care work with our local hospice. Something in their religious upbringing was making them question their own worth at a time when they needed spiritual comfort the most. At my last count, there are over 4,200 religions across the globe. Some are offshoots of earlier, larger religions, whereby some followers disagreed with the theology being offered and moved off to start a new religion that satisfied their respective beliefs. We hear different names for the Almighty. Allah, Yahweh, God, Creator, and we identify different individuals as spiritual leaders within our own religions. Now, while breaking away from a particular religion can lead to a more meaningful faith, it can also serve to hold progress back and stick with rigid and outdated beliefs. I taught Sunday school at Sandwich United Church in my younger years, which is now Bedford, and it started to call, uh, I remember a worship program being adopted by the United Church called the New Curriculum. And it called into question some of our current beliefs and asked us to consider the elements of our teachings in the context of, does it really matter? For example, does it really matter if we believe that Mary was a literal physical virgin? Or should we acknowledge that the word virgin in those times could also mean a young woman? Does it really matter if we believe that Jesus actually walked on water? Well, for some of us, it didn't really matter. While others at that time accused the United Church, and my aunt and uncle were one of them, two of them, of becoming a communist entity. And they left the church in favor of one that wouldn't pose any questions about what was printed in the Holy Bible. They certainly would rage at the question of, do we really know for sure if Jesus was not married? Well, fortunately for us here at Westminster and for believing faiths around the world, a more enlightened view of the universe and our role in it has emerged and continues to evolve. We've learned that it's okay and even healthy to question. We've learned that there won't always be answers. But we've learned that we may not always need answers. We've become comfortable occasionally, though maybe not always, to live the questions. Our religious teachings have moved beyond the old literal thinking, emboldening us to develop our own personal faiths built on our life experiences. And that's what I, the personal faith of it, built on our life experiences. Yeah, I shared with you some years ago a trauma that I had gone through 
uh, and stop believing. I quit going to church. I said, if God can let that happen, I want no part of this. And thankfully, through good therapy and actually speaking with Lexi at the time, uh, she said, you know, it helps me to think, Brian, of God not as all powerful, but as all loving. And that kind of softened my, my stance at that time, and I started finding my way back, but it came from in here. A professor of mine in university once said, you don't have to believe anything anyone tells you. Although I do think he wanted us to memorize what he was saying so we could rewrite it on the exam. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it freed us up to start thinking more critically and realistically. So now let's look at the concept of spirituality and how the concept of religion might relate to it or not. And we'll start with the Dalai Lama. Now that's simply a title that's given to the spiritual leader of Tibet. So the current Dalai Lama had tried to free Tibet from control of the Chinese authorities and along with several of his followers was exiled and found refuge in India. He continues to, has continued to speak across the world on the need for humans to focus less on religion and more on spiritual traits such as compassion and forgiveness. After a terrorist attack in Paris in 2015, he was quoted as saying, there are days when I think it would be better if there were no religions. Now, when asked what he meant, he expanded, and I'll quote, the knowledge and the practice of religion have been helpful, but today they're no longer enough. And this is true of all faiths. They have been, there have been, and some still are, frequently intolerant. Wars have been raged over the years in the name of religion. In the 21st century, we need a new ethic that transcends religion. Far more than organized faith is our elementary human spirituality. And he defines this as a predisposition toward love, kindness, and affection that we all have within us. Whether religious or not, we all have those values within us. In my view, he says, people can do without religion, but they can't do without inner values and without ethics. It's what we heard in Paul's message this morning. He offered phrases like mutual affection, respect for each other, hospitality to strangers, harmony with each other, and as far as it depends on you, live in peace with all people. And in Matthew's reporting, Jesus reminds us that we're all cut from the same cloth. And before we pass judgment on someone, we'd be better off looking inward and cleaning up our own stuff. I remember hearing a speaker at a conference once saying, if you're pointing your finger at somebody like this to shame them, you've got three pointing back at you. <laughs> oh. And then consider Norman King's definition of authentic spirituality as the intrinsic worth of the human person possessed by every human person, okay, everyone, yet in a unique and irreplaceable way in each of us, so we're all different, calling for recognition and respect in attitude and action. He was my spiritual mentor when I studied at Iona College. A terrific, uh, terrific person. So what does all this mean today? What is the call for each of us in the development of our connection to the spiritual elements of our universe? Well, as a partial answer, I think we need to accept that the power of the spirit resides inside each one of us. There is a biblical concept that says, oh, one day in the future, God will pour out his spirit among all people. And at that moment, 
the presence and power of God will be revealed to us. Well, you know, while this might come to pass, I don't know, I don't hang my faith on it. Rather than waiting for the Spirit to come to us, as I said, I think it's already here inside us. Rather from waiting for it to be poured from up above, perhaps we need to let our spirits be reignited from within. Whatever we've done to dampen our own spirits needs to be transformed to allow them to burn with new flames. We need to rejoice in our humanity, embracing and celebrating even our incompleteness. We will never get it all together in this life because we're not meant to, and we don't need to. In practical terms, it means simple things like showing up to help a friend or a neighbor who's struggling with a task, sitting with someone who's grieving and just listening with compassion, responding to a community need with our time, the list of opportunities to live out spirituality is indeed endless. And here at Westminster, the commitment of so many volunteers is what keeps the Westminster spirit alive as a congregation, allowing us to continue our outreach into the wider community. And the commitment of our minister Dell to provide consistent and meaningful worship throughout the pandemic and beyond is further evidence that the spirit of Westminster is indeed alive and well. And so we'll conclude with a look at the questions I posed earlier. You can think of how you would answer them. What would a compassionate, non-judgmental non response be? Is there a difference between being religious and spiritual? Can a non-religious person ever be spiritual? Is it a sin for a terminally ill person in pain to ask God to take them now? And if I haven't been baptized, can I still get into heaven? Well, I don't know how much we struggle with these questions ourselves. But you can consider your own answers as to how you would respond on your own personal spiritual journey. And know that you are loved unconditionally by whatever force it was that created you. So let us let go of the old and open to the love that always awaits us in the past, now, and tomorrow. This is Reverend Dell Stewart. I hope you enjoyed this audio presentation of today's time of worship and celebration. If you did, please click the like button. You can also click on subscribe to make it easier to find our channel and click the bell to receive a notification each time a podcast becomes available. Peace and joy now from Westminster United Church in Windsor, Ontario.